Peace, serenity, and history of the Forbidden City, the former home of the emperors of China, completed in 1420 and thus more than six centuries old. When I lived in Beijing, I would join the throngs of visitors who walked through one palace after the other, from the midpoint of the nation's capital all the way up to its northern gate, surrounded by temples, gardens, and parks. The Forbidden City in Beijing is not only survived, but is loved by millions of people around the world and cared for by a group of artisans whose knowledge, skills, and techniques are now seeking a next generation to inherit. Please give a warm welcome for James Chow. I'm James Chow, host of The China Current, with a glimpse into tomorrow's world and stories about the human experience everywhere. Finding apprentices to learn the skills perfected by centuries of artisans is not as easy as one thinks. A few years ago, the Forbidden City initiated a conservation project to renovate the Hall of Mental Cultivation so that a new group of craftsmen led by experts in ancient architecture could be identified for the future. This is critical not only to China, but more deeply to conservationists globally. For example, in 2011, when the Louvre Museum in Paris hosted an exhibition of 130 artifacts on the Forbidden City, they also welcomed a team of Chinese researchers and craftsmen who shared their knowledge with their French and European counterparts. The Hall of Mental Cultivation is found in the inner courtyards of the Forbidden City, originally built in 1537 during the Ming Dynasty and reconstructed in the Qing Dynasty. From the reign of the Yongzheng Emperor onwards, this hall served as the actual residence of the Emperor. So a lot is at stake. During the construction and maintenance of the Forbidden City's ancient buildings, there are complex and intricate construction techniques involved. These consist of eight main processes, including tile work, earthwork, stonework, woodwork, color work, paint work, scaffolding work, and pasting paperwork. These techniques with their rich connotations and refined skill sets are not only key to preserving the original appearance of the Forbidden City, but also have a direct impact on the development of ancient construction techniques. Let's look at woodwork, which you can see all over the former imperial residence and in many other examples of Chinese design and architecture, particularly the wooden roofs and the jigsaw nature of construction that locks one piece into another. The Forbidden City is no exception. In fact, it is the epitome of Chinese woodwork, being the world's largest surviving wood structure palace complex. Each door, window, and beam is a demonstration of the finest woodwork techniques that use a range of innovative tools such as chisels, saws, planes, hammers, and ink buckets. With these instruments, the original craftsman created a masterpiece that has easily lasted centuries. Oiling is another technique used in the Forbidden City to protect the woodwork, employing not only the precious properties of oil, but also ash and hemp to create an underlayer on the surface of the woodwork, and then adding oil to the underlayer to form the vermilion color that can be seen everywhere. I love the way this color stains the walls of the palace complex and brings to life the people, stories and emotions of six centuries of Chinese history. After nearly two years of selection, training and assessment, 20 out of the 100 craftsmen were chosen by the Forbidden City Museum to restore the Hall of Mental Cultivation. And so, the story of one of the world's great monuments to civilization continues once again. I'm James Chow, host of The China Current, bringing you on a journey of emotions.